Come be a part of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics with your host, Dr. Ed Holliday. Hear the voices of liberty speaking all across America. Doc Holliday provides thought-provoking interviews and commentary about the issues and actions that are afflicting this country and what we need to do to get America back on track. Get fired up. Get inspired. Get on board with Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right now. And here we go. Once again, that's the sound of rock cracking. You've got Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics right here on webtalkradio.net. That's webtalkradio.net. We're glad to have you. And yes, <laughs> it's getting crazy out there, folks, who talk about rock splitting politics. And we're in an election unlike any election we've had in my lifetime. And so much is at stake. And yet we don't know by the polling exactly what the polling means. Some people have... Uh, Joe Biden up by 10 points, and yet we got news coming out about Hunter Biden, Biden, and that's why the title of this week's show is Who's Hiding the Biden's Dirty Deeds? I mean, it's obvious there's some dirty deeds there. Where's it come from? Who's doing the hiding? Why won't people talk about what Hunter Biden's done, what Joe Biden's done, and we're going to talk about that. And then on the second half of the show, we've got uh, Elise Richmond coming on. We're going to be talking about ways that sometimes are ways uh, voters cheat uh, in, in, in an election and casting the ballots. So we got some interesting conversation on the second half of the show. But like I said last week, we had a new bombshell report coming out from a hard drive of supposedly, allegedly, the hard drive of Hunter Biden. So we need to say why, who, and just where and how people can hide what the Biden's dirty deeds have been. We know they've been there. America knows they've been there. And the establishment knows they've been there. Let, let's start out first what we know. Well, so much of what we found about Hunter was because of the impeachment process that the Democrats, when they impeached Donald Trump, it was about a letter to the Ukraine president, and Donald Trump was saying, do you have information on, on Hunter Biden and his, and his dad, Joe Biden? And that's why wouldn't we want to know if there's some illegal activities? Now, the thing is, there have been. It's obvious. And now we get a hard drive of emails that Hunter Biden had. And we can't believe, I say we can't, America finds it hard to believe that the FBI had this during the impeachment and nothing was brought out. Wow. I mean, it just, there are so many insiders who are out to get Donald Trump. And, and it just boggles my mind. It really makes me sick to think that the FBI had this information during the impeachment and sat on it. And sat on it. But even going back after impeachment, during the Democratic debates, what was going on? Well, one of the things we know is Bernie Sanders and all the other candidates would not even mention the Ukraine and the Bidens and Joe Biden. So I hope this whole episode blows up in the Democrats' face and helps Donald Trump. But the reason, the only reason it's blowing up now is the fact that they refused to dig into it and thought they would just leave it to the side. If Bernie Sanders really wanted a nomination, he could have delivered by showing what a crook Hunter Biden was, and he knew it. All the Democrats knew it, and all the media knew it, and nobody would look there. Nobody wanted to go there, and now they're trying still not to go there, where Twitter and Facebook were freezing accounts, 
and not allowing people to send out the information about the New York Post story of Hunter Biden last week. Influence in elections. That's what Facebook and Twitter were doing, influencing the, the election of 2020. And now, where does that leave us? And what does it mean? Well, we're going to talk about that and other questions. And But first, let me play this clip from uh, Sean Hannity last week when when he, uh, at the day after the, the, after the failed debate that didn't happen because the bipartisan debate commission is maybe bipartisan, but it's uh, 10 to nothing <laughs> against uh, President Trump. I don't think anybody in the entire commission is going to vote for President Trump, and that's not fair. And they knew. They knew they wanted Joe Biden to have an out, and they called off the debate without... I mean, it's just unbelievable. The American people were not served by this debate commission. Unbelievable way they're protecting Joe Biden. But because of that, there was a, a dueling uh, town hall, one on NBC, one ABC. This is what Sean Hannity had to say about that from last week. Um, if we're going to start out with anything before we get to the outright, if you never believe me when I said the media is corrupt, they're agenda driven. They are a mob. Look at these competing town halls. How did how did George Stephanopoulos not ask a single question about all of the news of zero experience Hunter Biden? How could he ignore the New York Post story? How could he ignore Joe on tape? You're not getting a billion unless you fire the prosecutor. Uh that is paying my zero experience son that said it on little Georgie's network. No experience, oil, gas, energy, or Ukraine, but why are you getting paid millions? I don't know. Is it because you're your father? Is the vice president? Probably. Probably, sure. Well, that doesn't happen to the rest of us, does it? Um, so didn't ask about that. Didn't ask about Ron Johnson's report about Russian oligarchs and because. Kazakh oligarchs and Ukrainian oligarchs and Chinese nationals and Russian nationals, Ukrainian nationals, Kazakhstan nationals and everything in between. And all of these wire transfers that took place, which run deep and long, didn't ask about the Bank of China, the one billion dollar deal there that became a one point five billion dollar deal with zero experience. Didn't ask about his son's business partners going to prison. Didn't ask about these new emails that show that. Joe Biden lied when he said that he knew nothing about his son's business dealings, which is just one of many lies. Factcheck.org documented at least eight major lies that Biden told last night. Biden falsely claiming members of the CDC and and prevention team in China came home before the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the staff was cut but not eliminated. That's not true. Claim the Trump administration stopped providing masks for school. Uh, for schools, one agency did stop, but everybody else distributed 125 million masks for schools. Biden claiming he opposed giving states more money for prison systems in 94, but he actually did support six billion in funding, not just the 10 billion that was in the final crime bill. Former vice president cited an estimate 10 million would lose employer sponsored insurance during the pandemic. Didn't mention most would regain other coverage. And that was uh, Sean Hannity's short interpretation of what happened in just the Stephanopoulos ABC debate where the softball questions kept coming for uh, Joe Biden. And yet what was happening over on the NBC town hall where uh, the voters were supposed to be asking questions, well, uh, the NBC's uh, anchor person, Savannah Guthrie just kept hammering away at Trump. I mean, hammering him over and over and didn't let the hardly let very many voters get questions in. But it was just a complete rock'em sock'em NBC. And I guess they felt under pressure. A lot of people were mad they were even letting Trump have uh, the podium. And yet she so she rock'em sock'em of questions wasn't anything like Joe Biden got from George Stephanopoulos. But again, we see this bias just as uh, Sean Hannity, we played that clip, and there's so much more here. But the biggest bias of it all, going back, is the 
the refusal of the mainstream media to talk about Hunter Biden and dig into what his problems were and if they're just Hunter's problems or did Joe Biden help him when he was senator and vice president? And, of course, the answer is he has. It's not just the Hunter. It's with the entire Bidens. And we're finding that out in emails we're seeing. And I hope we see more. But the mainstream medias act to continue to hide the Bidens' dirty deeds is why we're doing this show, why voters across America need to hear about this. And it's the very reason why Joe Biden says vote early because he knows more and more of this information is getting out. Even though Twitter and Facebook and the mainstream media are trying to put a lockdown on all this information and all this education about the rotten deals of the Biden family, and yet the American people are voting on who their next president's going to be. And if it's going to be Joe Biden, they need to know if he's a crook. Like Richard Nixon said. Nixon said he wasn't a crook. And he was. Well, Joe Biden has said he's never met with these people. He didn't know what Hunter Biden was doing. And yet we know he did meet. There's pictures of him playing golf. There's people been put in jail that were friends of Hunter Biden. And Joe Biden knew them. And he's met with them. And the, the horror is the people that he met from the Chinese government, Joe Biden, who were in cahoots and working with Hunter Biden. And that's where we got emails pointing that direction. We need to know before people vote for president of the United States. We need to know if Joe Biden's elected president by the people of the United States, is he going to be in jail? Is Joe Biden going to be in jail before he ever gets inaugurated? And well should be. And well should be from what we're seeing. And yet the mainstream media will not cover this. They're covering it up. They're trying to bury it. And the people need to know. Americans, they're voting now. They need to know this is the time to dig into it. It should have been when he was in the primaries, but the media refused to dig into it. His fellow candidates refused to dig into it, so they have all the burden to share. This is not some conservative hit job. Everybody's known about what's going on with Hunter Biden. It's been out there for people to dig into, and the media, the mainstream media, has refused to do it. And now they, it's their obligation to see what's going on on this person who people are voting for even now for president of the United States. That is such, um, it's such a horrible deal that the mainstream media has been hiding this. It's very irresponsible. It's why people call them the fake news. They deserve the label fake news. And Twitter and Facebook are, <laughs> have been able to not be sued because of special treatment given to them by the Congress. By the Congress. And now we need to find out why they are interfering with elections, Twitter and Facebook. So I hope we have some hearings this week about that. I hope Ted Cruz and others in the U.S. Senate will, will expose what they're doing in influencing elections. But the American people need to know who they are voting for. Some people may not like Trump. We understand that. I'm not saying you have to get out and vote for Trump if you don't like him. But you need to vote for the Republican nominee. How about that? There's a huge difference between what the Republican Party platform stands for and the Democratic Party platform stands for. Some people say they're never Trumpers. Well, don't vote uh, for Donald Trump. Vote for the Republican nominee and vice president nominee. Just hold your nose and go in there and vote. But we need to make sure we don't have a corrupt establishment that's cheated Americans and, and we don't get the same deals that Hunter Biden gets. He's been getting them all his life. 
And now we're not talking about $100,000 jobs. We're talking about millions of dollars. A check from the ex-mayor of Moscow's uh, ex-wife and uh, for three and a half million dollars. Tell me about it. Tell us about it. Why? Why do you get a check for three and a half million dollars, Hunter Biden? And then let's put it out there. Put it out there where we can see it and American people can know what's going on. And Joe Biden, if Hunter's not speaking, you've got to speak up. You don't have a clue. Either you're an idiot because you don't have a clue or you're hiding things. Well, that's, <laughs> wow. We're, we're right through in the first half of this show. It's Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You're listening to us right here on webtalkradio.net. And I do want to remind you that you're li- you're listening to us on Web Talk Radio, and this is an election year, and we are we usually have more people listening right before the elections. We want to welcome our new listeners. Keep listening. Look back in our archives. We've got some great shows. Uh, we had uh, one of Newt Gingrich a couple months ago with uh, U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn. We've had several interesting guests, including uh, Daphne Barack, and they got a new uh, documentary out trump versus hollywood hear about that from last week's show some great shows tell your friends and neighbors about doc holiday's rock splitting politics and get them listening you hear things here that you won't hear anywhere else we appreciate you listening to us and we do have a book it's called bedrock truth written by doc holiday dr alveda king and dr alex mcfarland you can get that book if you like to just uh Go to www.docholiday.org. Holiday's got two L's in it, H-O-L-L-I-D-A-Y. Now, uh, in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about how ways that people can cheat. They can cheat with the vote. We're going to talk to Elise Richmond, and she's she's had years in uh, Southern California. She's just moved to Mississippi, and so we had to get some comments from her and we're going to get her on the show in just a minute before we do take a listen to this and this is a message from rick gates uh that uh yes the one from the Mueller report that ran into problems and had to plead guilty on several items but he's going to tell us about something that the revelation from last week about barisma and he will also be the guest on Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics next week. So take a little listen from this uh, from Rick Gates, and we will have some good questions for him next week. We're introducing the Honorable Rick Gates. Jerry, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, the revelations that we've learned from yesterday and today regarding Hunter and Joe Biden are quite clearly going to be another October surprise. Uh, This one is particularly uh, concerning and disturbing because it actually links the former vice president to a scheme where allegedly he and his son uh, were uh, in in cahoots in terms of getting Hunter positioned on boards and and within companies uh, in return for being able to use his father's influence uh, at the time the sitting vice president to influence a host of issues, including foreign policy uh, and business matters. And obviously this is quite a significant development because we have Joe Biden on record several months ago indicating that he had never had any discussions with his son Hunter about any business transactions or companies that he was involved in. And the email evidence yesterday, the parts that we have so far, suggests this is not true And in fact, Joe Biden met with a Burisma official, uh, which is a oil and gas company in Ukraine, of which Hunter Biden was appointed to its board. And that was Rick Gates. uh, He was speaking at uh, 20 Days to Save America. And you can go to 20 Days to Save America. Just uh, search that in the search engine. I will be on there with uh, over 100 other speakers. So. Uh, check out 20 Days to Save America and hear some great conservative speakers, including Doc Holliday. So uh, check that out. Now, let's uh, get to our interview with Elise Richmond about uh, voter fraud. 
and I asked Elise what she thought about the mainstream media. And when they talk about voter fraud, they say it's very minimal. It's not a problem. And so I asked Elise, do you believe it? the mainstream media when they say we don't have a problem with voter fraud in this country? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I have stacks of information concerning voter fraud in just about every state. Now, I recently moved to Mississippi uh, about three years ago from California, and it's as different as daylight and dark. Mississippi definitely has a picture voter ID. So that keeps the fraud way, way down. But the state's so we don't necessarily have to worry about it. So you can say, well, we're here in Mississippi. Why should we be concerned? Because voter fraud is in all of the other states that don't have voter IDs. Well, you know, what you brought up, voter ID and the, and the pictures, do you know how many states do not have voter ID? You know, I knew you were going to ask me that, and right before you called, I was trying to Google it to find out the changes. Uh, the last time, and I don't, I really don't want to quote it because I know that I, right. th things have changed, but it was, um, I'm going to say about a year ago, uh, about 15 had voter picture IDs, and another few more had just to show IDs that were non-picture IDs. And I should have looked that up for you, uh, Dr. Holliday, but um, when I Googled it, I had to count these little squares, and then the phone rang, and it was yeah, you. Okay. So there you have it. <laughs> well, but, but we know that uh, probably less than half the states have voter ID. And, yes. And, and then yes. the ones that do, uh, it, it just amazes me how you need a, a picture to check into a hotel, to fly on an airplane, <laughs> and... Uh, and, you know, and they, they just trust people without even a voter ID in so many places. Well, it's true. It's common sense to have a voter ID, but it is my opinion now that the federal government is going to have to require a federal voter ID for all states because there are states that will never vote in a picture voter ID if the government doesn't require them to do it. And quite honestly, that's going to be hard. But uh, there are so many ways to commit voter fraud that people are just totally unaware of. And uh, I don't know if you ever heard the term gypsy voting? I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. So what's that? Well, gypsy voting is there are a number of people who do gypsy voting. One group are people who are hired and sent out to register to vote in a number of different places, and then they just hop from place to place. And they vote in one precinct, and they go to another precinct, and then they go to another precinct. And if you have a state that has provisional ballots, and that means if you appear, they have to give you a ballot, then you can do that in a whole area, and you can see how many votes you could rack up for a particular candidate. So that is one uh, gypsy voter ID. And in some places where, you know, the lines, the state lines are close, people hop state lines and uh, go voting in different states. The other group that is very, very um, prominent gypsy voters are college students. They vote on campus. And then they vote at home also, or they vote on campus, and they vote an absentee ballot at home. And so you can see how doubling up on many campuses all across this nation would cause the votes to be fraudulent and skewed. And you say, oh, that's not true. No, the stats are pretty clear that that is true. On a couple college campuses, they had definitely shown some uh, gypsy voters that were literally um, voting, and they had the same number of voters as they actually had students on the campus, which would be pretty impossible. Right, and then so, so you're saying that they were gypsy voters, students were voting as different people uh, many times, is that what you were saying? No, I'm saying that they were voting as themselves, but there's no... Um, actual check on the vote that would go in to the ballot box on campus to allow them to vote or the mail-in ballot that was sent out to where they lived. Right. So okay. in other words, they could be registered in both places and no one's checking. 
That's what gypsy voting is. There's no check on it. You can just run around and vote as many times as you want. And some uh, of the actual stats that came out of some places where they caught people doing that and interviewed them, and they would say, well, we voted, uh, let's see, I voted 47 times now. Well, you know, and as far as I know, on that kind of voting, I have not seen anyone be prosecuted. Have you ever seen anybody prosecuted for uh, for that? <laughs> No, I have not seen anyone prosecuted for gypsy voting, and that's why we can have so much fraudulent voting in the United States, because nobody ever follows up. It's amazing to me when they catch a uh, government official that is in charge of the voting in that state, and they actually go after them. <laughs> but my question for you would be, what do you think about the election? Because they're, all states don't have IDs, voter IDs, picture or not, what do you think is going to happen with this election? Well, one thing is I am glad that each state sets their own laws and we don't have a federal mandate, although it might be good to have the ID federal mandate. But the, And that's why it's so hard to uh, cheat in a nationwide election because every state has different laws. When I say cheat, we know there's going to be a, a hand, and there's always going to be some cheating. What you don't want to see is happening on a large scale. And I, I'll give you an example here in Mississippi. I know we're... The uh, I was having a poll watch, and you can't say anything. You can just report to Secretary of State. But I know at the end, when they they had absentee ballots that they were going to count, but they first were supposed to check and see if they'd come in to vote. And where I was at the precinct, they did not check if they had voted or not. They poured out, they opened up the envelopes and poured them out all in one big pile before they checked to see they'd voted at that point it's too late so some people right. may have voted voted twice now if they did that on purpose or if they just did it because they didn't know better I, I don't know and but i'm just saying there's like you said there's so many places where voter fraud can happen and so the what does bother me just like uh president trump has said is these non-solicited ballots going out by the millions across the nation. Oh, it's horrible. It's and, horrible. And, and and just no and there's no way to stop that. It seems like some judge could do something, but it's it's too late now. They're already going out. And that's uh I mean you could have and they've already found people who are uh in Texas and I don't know if you saw that we're in Texas where uh people were collecting these mail out ballots and harvesting the ballots without you know, without anybody voting yet. They were they were wanting the blank ballots and then they got them. Uh, so. And they strong arm people to get them. We had, I have uh, done a lot of phoning for candidates in uh, California. In fact, I just finished a list yesterday. Was phoning from Mississippi because my cell phone still has my uh, area code right. from uh, California, so I can phone and people, you know, see their own area code. But uh, harvesting ballots is incredible. They'll go into nursing homes, and these people, you know, bless their hearts, they are in such a situation sometimes that they have to do exactly what it said they turn over their ballots to the person who's in charge they collect them all they vote them all a certain way and then they turn them all in at once and uh that is something that happens in california all the time and i'm afraid it happens more than just in california so that's why you need to not only go vote uh check about being a poll watcher uh keep your eyes open cell phone zone and you see things happening illegally get it reported get it recorded and really, watch out for these truckloads of ballots that are sitting out somewhere waiting for the Democratic Party telling which state they need to be moved into. How about that? <laughs> well, maybe they don't go that far. But I'm telling you, we need everybody out voting. Make sure you vote. If you can't get out and vote, make sure you vote early. Make sure you get your absentee ballot in. And But watch out for all these ballots that are floating around. If you see some kind of illegal activity, by all means, record it. Ask about it. See what's going on there. And so we can have a fair election like President Trump said. Now, <laughs> wow, we've covered so much. Elise, thank you for being on our show this week. And thank you for your input from uh, California and where we know there's been a lot of cases of voter fraud and they have been around the country. So let's keep our eyes open and make sure you get out and vote. Uh, Donald Trump has got a lot of ground to cover and he's got a lot of people out there that want to see him 
be reelected, but they've got to get out and vote. And so encourage them. Make sure if you think anybody needs a ride at the poll, you'll get them to the poll. Now, next week, we will have Rick Gates. And, you know, back we had uh, 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 Daphne Barack on, and she wrote a book, To Plea or Not to Plea, about the Rick Gates story. And so now we'll have him on. There's so much we could ask him about the past, but really we want to – he he has he's lived in the Ukraine. He has knowledge of what uh, the inner dealings of the Ukraine and this Hunter Biden story. So hold on your hats. Next week we'll have we'll have Rick Gates on with some uh, hopefully illuminating stories. See you then. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to listen again next week for another edition of Doc Holliday's Rock Splitting Politics. You can order Ed's new book, Bedrock Truths, by clicking on the book cover right in front of you on the screen, or visit DocHolliday.org. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next week.